Let's talk about the biggest freak of 2024, P. Diddy. Lil Rod alleges he was, quote, the victim of constant unsolicited and unauthorized groping and touching of his ass by Mr. Combs. At times, Lil Rod says Diddy touched his private areas without consent. Pretty serious allegations in the lawsuit filed by Cassie that Diddy raped her, sexually assaulted her, forced her to have sex with a prostitute, carry a gun, some pretty serious things. I think we're about to see something on the level of uh, Epstein, Weinstein, to the power of 10. One fine morning in 2023, Sean Diddy Combs was minding his own business when his ex-girlfriend decided to expose his vile, predatory behavior. He had been getting away with his nastiness up until now, but no more. The accusations have crumbled his carefully built reputation and landed him into a million-dollar lawsuit. So what are these dark secrets, and who helped hide them for so long? Welcome to Trapdoor Celebs. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and watch until the end to find out the truth behind Diddy's filled parties. Accusations by Cassie Sean Combs, Puff Daddy, Puffy, or Diddy. The rapper has gained a significant reputation in the hip-hop world with his hard work and dedication, but his image was shattered in November of 2023 when his former partner, singer Cassandra Ventura, also known as Cassie, filed a lawsuit against him, claiming that he abused her, assaulted her, and forced her to conduct inappropriate intimate encounters with male sex workers. We should have noticed the blaring red signs when the two began working together when she was only 19 and Diddy was 37. The pair started dating in 2007 and broke up in 2018. In her lawsuit, Cassie stated she endured years of abuse at the hands of Diddy, saying he was prone to uncontrollable rage and frequently beat her savagely. She claimed him to be possessive, and dominating. According to her, he beat her multiple times a year, and sometimes they would leave bruises on her body. He would go on to hide Miss Ventura in hotels for days at a time to let her bruises heal. Cassie was done with his abuse and wanted to end the relationship, and that's when Diddy showed her how big of a monster he could be. Ms. Ventura said that the pattern of abuse began as soon as their relationship started, and that, as she was trying to end it in 2018, he forced himself into her Los Angeles home and her. Although her lawsuit was settled the next day for an undisclosed amount of money, many believe that this lawsuit gave others the courage to tell their stories and demand justice. You might be thinking, why didn't she come forward when he was regularly abusing her? Well, Diddy had threatened her to keep her mouth shut. Ventura's suit also said that Combs and his associates used his power and wealth to intimidate her into silence and compliance, with his employees threatening to damage her music career if she spoke out against him. After the complaints, Diddy claimed that Cassie was trying to blackmail him to give up a large sum of money. For the past six months, Mr. Combs has been subjected to Ms. Ventura's persistent demand of $30 million under the threat of writing a damaging book about their relationship, said his lawyer. He further added that after she was unable to get the money, she started filing lawsuits with baseless claims to create pressure on Diddy. Thankfully, Cassie is now happily married with the most supportive man who shows up to anti-abuse events, so Cassie has zero reasons to dig up an old grave and trigger herself. And now her lawsuit reportedly opened a floodgate as more people came forward with their claims. Accusations by Rodney Lilrod Jones. On February 26th, 2024 in New York, producer Rodney Lilrod Jones filed a complaint against P. Diddy that shook the world. It was almost 100 pages and there were several huge bombshells and celebrity names that were dropped. Fellow rappers, music producers, and British royalty, no one was spared. As we all know, Rodney had worked with Diddy for about a year and that's when he put him through abuse. Apart from the names he mentioned, Rodney's accusations were backed by solid evidence that is going to shatter Diddy's image. He talks about having video um, of some of these alleged illegal activities. And so it is possible that it's not just his word, but there might be actual picture or video corroboration. In his lawsuit, Rodney mentioned hidden cameras in Diddy's room, which prompted the federal police to raid both his houses and find those devices for further investigation. By law enforcement recovering those video cameras, recovering laptops, recovering cell phones, they're able to investigate and do a forensic investigation into those electronic devices and try to get additional evidence evidence as to a crime that has taken place. So, what did he accuse Diddy of? In the 74 pages of suit, he lays out some pretty serious allegations against Diddy, including that Diddy sexually assaulted Lil Rod, facilitated sex and drug trafficking schemes, and recorded much of his illegal activity. And the abuse allegations were also vile. Lil Rod says Diddy, quote, attempted to groom Mr. Jones into engaging in gay sex 
works. He also dropped some major celebrity names in the suite. Some of these celebrities were innocent, while some were people Rodney was sent to for illicit activities. The lawsuit also alleges that Combs regularly hosted trafficking parties with underage women and illegal drugs and implies record label executives who looked the other way financially benefited from access to celebrities and dignitaries including the British royal Prince Harry so what are some of the names mentioned in Rodney's lawsuit he called out actress model Daphne Joy and rapper Young Miami as sex workers who receive a monthly fee from Diddy in exchange for favors. Both, however, have denied the allegations. Rodney also said Diddy was able to threaten people and bend them to his whims because music label CEOs Lucian Grange and Ethiopia Habtamarium enabled him. He would leverage their power and connections and throw you out of the industry if you fail to please him. Rodney claimed that Diddy allowed actor Cuba Gooding Jr. to groom him and then force into performing acts. He also mentioned Jennifer Lopez in the suite, who reportedly carried a gun for Diddy that was used during the 1999 nightclub shooting in New York. And Diddy's chief of staff, Christina Corum, managed all illicit activities that took place inside his house. Among other things, the music producer accused Miss Corum of requiring all of Diddy's employees to carry drugs around his home, including cocaine, GHB, ecstasy, and marijuana. He also claimed Miss Corum ordered sex workers and pro for her boss. Although Rodney's lawsuit mentioned Prince Harry's name, it didn't say that he was engaged in any illicit activities. He said, those who affiliated with or sponsored Diddy's alleged sex trafficking parties became connected with celebrities such as international dignitaries like British royal Prince Harry, while constantly putting him through abuse and mental trauma, Diddy forced Rodney to keep his mouth shut to protect his image by offering him money and real estate. Lil Rod even alleges that Diddy promised him things in order to keep him quiet, like $250,000 to buy instruments, ownership of Diddy's $20 million property in Miami, and even a Grammy for producer of the year. But as his grip on Rodney began to loosen, he resorted to violence and threats. According to Rodney, the two began working in August 2022, and the abuse took place between September 2022 and February 2024. Ryan Mendelson, a 20-year-old who lived in the same area as Diddy says, that he always saw him partying hard. I drive by a lot, and I see that. A lot of girls, maybe five or six girls outside. Some leaving, some not. Some going in, he said. And now everyone knows what those parties were about. Accusations by Joey Dickerson Neal. Just like Cassie, Neal also filed her lawsuit under the Adult Survivors Act and demanded a trial by jury. Her lawsuit was filed in November 2023 and spoke of the time she was a college student in the early 90s, proving that Diddy has been an abuser pretty much all his life. She alleged this was all the way back in 1991 that Diddy her, assaulted her, similarly recorded this on video. The difference here between her and Cassie is that Joy Dickerson Neal demands that there is a trial won't be settled outside of court. The two had mutual friends, and Neil had also appeared in a few music videos at this point. This grabbed Diddy's attention, and just like he did with many other women, he wanted to lure Neil in and have fun. So, he asked her out, and she went with him unwillingly. According to her lawsuit, Diddy drugged her so that he could have his way with her. She claimed that Combs pushed her to go to dinner with him, and she agreed reluctantly on 3rd January 1991, which is when she alleges she was drugged resulting in her being in a physical state where she could not independently stand or walk, the BBC reported. And then he brutally raped her and in a disgusting power trip also recorded the assault to show others. After the incident, Neil sustained severe psychological trauma and cut herself off from the world temporarily to cope with it. The poor thing eventually dropped out of college and grew self-harm tendencies. She also had to admit herself into a psychiatric ward for treatment, all because of Diddy's twisted gratification. What a freak. Later, Neil wanted to file a complaint with the New York and New Jersey police, but was reportedly told by her colleagues that they might destroy their careers if they testified in her favor, so she backed off. Other Allegations since November 2023, three more women have come forward and filed complaints against Diddy, mentioning that they had been subjected to the same kind of abuse. Two of the women said they were teenagers at the time of the alleged assaults. A woman named Liza Gardner filed a lawsuit under the Adult Survivor Act and added the name Aaron Hall in her suit alongside Diddy's. She was one of the women who was violated by Diddy in the early 90s. She met Diddy and Aaron Hall at an event and the pair were handsy with Liza and one of her friends. 
Liza and the friend went to an after party where she, quote, was offered more drinks and was coerced into having sex with Combs. But it didn't end there. Diddy then allowed his friend Hall to continue the assault. After Combs finished doing his business, Liza Gardner laid in bed, shocked and traumatized. As she was in the process of getting dressed, Hall barged into the room, pinned her down, and forced Liza Gardner to have sex with him. A few days after this incident, Diddy came to her house and beat and angled her to the point she lost consciousness. Whether it was from rage or to assert dominance, we will never know. Another anonymous complaint came from a woman who kept her identity hidden, calling herself Jane Doe. The plaintiff claimed that Diddy and her in 2003, when she was only 17 years old. The suet accused Combs of a sex trafficking scheme in which Jane Doe was flown by private jet from her home in Michigan to New York. But now that we know the kind of violence Diddy is capable of, we're not even surprised that he assaulted a minor. Hollywood and Diddy's fans are now waiting to see where the case goes. So, how did Diddy react to all these allegations? Well, he denied all of them and called the claims sickening and said his accusers were looking for a quick payday. He added, let me be be absolutely clear, I did not do any of the awful things being alleged, he said in a statement. I will fight for my name, my family, and for the truth. His lawyer called these allegations pure fiction. But as investigations roll forward, crime analysts are expecting more allegations to come forward. And if pictures and videos can support these claims, Diddy might be in for a roller coaster ride this year. So what happens now? After the allegations of actual misconduct and hidden cameras came out, the federal police raided Diddy's Los Angeles and Miami homes on March 25, 2024. With the images of armed agents, Diddy's children in cuffs, and a media circus outside, the raids made headlines nationwide. Reportedly, they searched his home for hours and confiscated firearms. Federal agents reportedly found firearms on Diddy's LA and Miami properties. However, it's unclear what type of guns were found and who the legal owners were. A few media outlets collected rare photographs of Diddy's house after the raid. The houses were ransacked and turned upside down as the police hunted for evidence to incriminate him. Home. Drawers were ripped open, items were scattered everywhere, as the feds seemingly had their eyes on the computer hard drives, which were reportedly seized during the raid. Law crime legal analyst Julie Rendelman has closely been observing this case, and according to her, the current situation and the March raid in Diddy's house indicate this might be getting in serious trouble very soon. I think anytime you have Homeland and security raiding both of your homes, um, you know that that there's potential trouble um, heading in your direction. And with the existing claims, she believes that the star will be labeled a criminal. Any attorney, um, whether it be a federal or state prosecutor or defense attorney who hears uh, that, that P. Diddy's home, both homes have been raided by federal agents, is going to think the exact same thing, that he is very, very likely headed towards criminal charges. Everyone is growing impatient and demanding an arrest, but former homicide prosecutor Bernardo Valle Luna believes that the police will need solid incriminating evidence before they can drag Diddy into the slammer. You want to make sure that if he is arrested and he is prosecuted, that you can prove your case beyond a reasonable doubt. And the worst part is that despite all the details coming out, the arrest might or might not happen. To be honest, it can be any day or it can be months from now or nothing can happen. They can say, we don't have enough credible evidence to prove his guilt beyond a reasonable doubt and leave it at that. And the reason for this is that a civil lawsuit is not the same as a criminal prosecution that needs solid, incriminating evidence to prove that the convict is guilty. Diddy, however, looked all chill as he spent a cozy day with his twin daughters. The hip-hop mogul and mega producer was even caught flashing a smile to the cameras after he's seen leaving a Miami Top Golf with his twin daughters Thursday night. His demeanor appears as though he's unbothered despite being flooded with legal battles and having his Miami and Los Angeles homes raided by the feds. But investigations are underway, and the federal police is speaking to anyone and everyone mentioned in these lawsuits. Safe to say, Diddy may get locked up and they won't let him out. If you made it this far, thanks for watching. Please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to Trapdoor Celebs for more interesting breaking stories.